Hello guys, and welcome back to another cold episode. On today's episode, we're talking about the best decks to climb in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel with the new pack upon us. With the release of uh, Gold Sark? Shining Sark, that one, not Gold Sark. Uh, Shining Sark is the new archetype that came out, as well as Flame Swordsman, which is a TCG exclusive that has now been ported over to a Master Duel, as well as Melodious just received its new support. So with the new pack in mind, what are the best decks to play and to climb? Uh, so yeah, there, there are no particular order here, uh, but we're just going to quickly rank them. Uh, starting off with a Plant Link, I'm going to put this solidly in Rogue. I think it's pretty decent and it can do pretty well. Uh, the biggest gripe that I have with it is that it really doesn't do well into uh, established boards and it doesn't do really well into max C. So while it can do pretty well into things like Tenpai or what have you, uh, the, the fact that like it loses to max C and if it loses the coin flip, it has a 50-50 shot of just kind of like being doomed. Not exactly great. Um, so there's that. It can still make things work, but it's not insane. Next up, we have Runic, which I'm just going to classify as, like, the stun decks. And uh, for the most part, I don't think stun is exceptional. In fact, it's probably way worse than it's been in a while. But stun still just happens to take names from people, especially in best of ones. So I don't really want to put it below Rogue. Uh, next up, we have... So on here, it is Runic Sprite. But realistically, in my mind, this is just Sprite. Now, I have... I have just done, uh, or I, I, I've done a lot of Sprite content, and uh, I, I know relatively where Sprite goes. And the thing is, there are some very mid Sprite decks, right? Most notably, I think like Live Twin Sprite is really bad right now. I think Runic Sprite is very, very bad right now. I think Fur Hire Runic Sprite and stuff like that, uh, pretty bad. I think your best options are Tri Brigade Sprite as well as a kind of like U Bell esque Sprite, U Bell, quote unquote. Uh, with like the the uh, sacred beast normal summons, which are very powerful, I think those are probably your best options for sprite. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. However, I do think that it is actually very good. I think sprite is in a pretty solid position overall. Um, however, I'm gonna put it solidly in tier two at the moment. Uh, and y yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I think it's pretty much at the top of tier two, uh, but it, it it's pretty underrated and uh very strong <clears throat> next up we have voiceless i'm gonna put solidly in tier 1.5 uh this is a very good deck with which to climb it's consistent it is very good going first it's a solid game plan just overall and uh yeah it works pretty well i, I don't really have much to say about this uh next up we have lab lab is also pretty decent um it kind of depends on what the tenpai players are playing mostly because if ten if the tenpai players are playing lots of board breakers it's not as good but if they're playing more hand traps then it gets significantly better and it just kind of depends on the day sometimes it's better sometimes it's worse uh but overall i still think that lab is very well positioned in the current metagame it doesn't really have too many egregiously bad matchups for the most common decks so there you go <clears throat> Uh, Marinsas, hate to say it, not a good deck right now. Just solidly don't even look at it. Uh, if Toad was here, it'd be a great deck, but it's not. So it has all of the same issues that uh, Plant Link has, except for the fact that its end board is not nearly as good. So that's pretty much it. Next up, we have Melodious. Now, Melodious has two forms that you could potentially play it in. The first form is pure which is just Melodious, which is a fairly decent end board and can play through uh, a fair amount of interactions and can play a lot of hand traps, which is pretty good. However, the second option is as an engine within another deck, something like Centurion, something like Snake Eye, etc. There are uh, a lot of reasons to play the Melodious engine, the main being that you can go into Apo pretty e efficiently off of the Melodious cards. Uh, because they just generate a bunch of bodies. So it is very useful with Ostinato as just like an additional engine to kind of get your place going. And because of that, I'm going to solely rate this on pure because what ends up happening is the Melodious cards become an engine in other decks that we can probably talk about when those decks come up. But overall, I think Melodious is a solid tier two deck, even pure. Uh, its end board is a little bit weaker, but overall, the fact that it can play so much non-engine to uh, easily pivot between 
metagames or or just like whatever happens to be popular at the time to kind of prepare for that uh as well as just having the ability to uh, make such a dynamic end board uh that not a lot of people are or not a lot of decks are like prepared to deal with makes it quite uh interesting <clears throat> Uh, next up we have Galaxy. I believe this is Galaxy. If it is Galaxy, it's it's, it's there. So, there you go. Uh, this has Fiendsmith on here. Ignore this. This is just Rescue Ace. Rescue Ace, I believe, is genuinely really, really good right now. I, yeah, uh, heavily underrated. Uh, I still think it's extremely strong. Um, it basically didn't lose anything from the ban list, and it was already really, really strong. So, yeah. And Tenpai doesn't really put too much of a strain onto Rescue Ace. Like, it can don't get me wrong, it can create issues for Rescue Ace, but because of the way that Rescue Ace works with a lot of its interaction coming from extremely powerful spell traps, um, if Tenpai don't have a legit uh, back row removal, like Harvey's Feather Duster or Heavy Storm or something along those, along those lines, which I think they're playing less of, it's hard to say. They, they kind of make up their own minds. But for the most part, like, even if they don't, or if they just, like, don't draw it, it becomes extremely powerful. Um, and even with that being said, against a lot of the other decks, I think it's also very strong. Next up, we have, okay, so there's Orcist and Sky Striker on here, but uh, this is just Orcist with any variant. I, I would say Horus is probably the best variant, and uh, all things considered, I think Orcist is still fairly decent. Uh, it does lose to Tenpai and a bunch of other decks as well, but it, I still think it has some solid plays. Uh, it's turn one board is not necessarily bad, and it does have uh, some very strong options given to it, uh, and a lot more consistency, which is nice. It can also break boards pretty effect uh, effect <laughs> effectively, which is pretty cool, uh, just due to how powerful Ding Girsu is as a card. Uh, next up, we have Sword Soul, which I want to put in everything else because I know how bad this deck is, so I'm gonna. I just, it, it, uh, it doesn't do anything. Anytime I've seen it played, it just, like, falls apart. Unless the opponent draws, like, exactly the cards that they need. Like, in a very specific 6 to 5 card hand. It, it, yeah, it's just, it's not great. It dies to just, like, everything. Next up, we have Tier Limit. Um, Tier Limit is a solid Tier 1 deck. Uh, notably, for climbing keep this in mind. I don't think it's the most powerful deck, but I think it is maybe the best deck for climbing. Reason being, stick with me here, <clears throat> no one is necessarily preparing for tier limit, right? Everyone and their mother are preparing specifically for the Tenpai Mirror Match, or just Tenpai in general. So, a lot of powerful decks are going under the radar and being ignored in terms of deck preparation, in terms of uh, deck choices, in terms of uh, who's going first, who's going second. Tier Limit can punish Tenpai players probably the best. The end board for Tier Limit is so extremely difficult for a Tenpai player, or just pretty much any deck, to realistically beat. So if there's a whole bunch of board breakers in the format, or, if you can play through a bunch of hand traps, which Tier Lament can very easily do, it's in a pretty good position. So, overall, I think Tier Lament is really good and is probably the best deck to climb with. Because uh, it just does really well into the current metagame. However, Tier Lament can be prepared for pretty easily and immediately kind of gets stopped, right? Um, if people are preparing for it, if people are uh, choosing to go first more often, if um, if the correct hand traps are being played, right? If bestials become more prevalent, stuff like that. Uh, I think I think again, tier limit is pretty weak and pretty susceptible due to its consistency issues. But for the most part, even without the uh, the Perla Rhino, it's still insane. <clears throat> uh, another deck that I think is extremely good and is probably being slept on simply due to the people hating Tenpai is Snake Eye Fire King. I think this deck is, is still extremely strong. Yes, they did lose Poplar, and now drawing Poplar is kind of a brick. But with that being said, I think that realistically the Fire King stuff it plays really well both going first and going second into Tenpai. Uh, well, 
going first into Tenpai, but it also plays very well going second just across the board because it is pretty good to just draw a whole bunch of engine and like push through an established board, which is pretty much what Tier Limit does. Um, does it play a lot of non-engine? No. Is a whole bunch of non-engine really good right now? No, not necessarily. Uh, so I, I think it's very, very strong and I think it is a solid option still. Uh, next up we have Tenpai. Tenpai I think is actually not all that great to climb with compared to how strong it actually is. I think Tenpai is the strongest deck in the game. Is it the best deck with which to climb? No. Reason being, everyone is preparing for you. Everyone is playing cards specifically to beat you. As well as, the mirror match becomes a coin flip, which you really don't want to have. And I'm not talking about, like, actually just who decides going first and going second. That's not it. It is pretty much just who ends up drawing the better hand in that situation. So it's more of a roll of the dice or a hope and pray that you draw better than your opponent, which uh, isn't great for climbing. However, with that being said, still the best deck by far. So, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's still really good. Uh, next up, we have Branded. I'm going to put Branded in uh, 1.5. If you're good at Branded, which I'm not, uh, but like Branded has the same things that like Tier Element has, just weaker. Like it, it does pretty much the same things. So there's that. <clears throat> it can also like entirely invalidate turns by just like giving the opponent a thing that prevents them from summoning, which is fun. I'm lying, but it's fun. <clears throat> next up, Pearly. Uh, Pearly, I also think, is pretty underrated. It plays very well into Tenpai. I think it is a, an extremely strong deck to play just in general. I think it has good going first, going, going second hands. Draw six is really good. Draw four is really good. Draw two is very good, just in general, right? Uh, being able to draw into those uh, powerful hand traps, as well as just ending on a board that is uh, difficult to out. Also very nice. Um, and then overall, just, yeah, Pearly is uh, very strong and uh, very competent right now. Um... Yeah, that's it. Uh, however, I will say, Master Duel players are not exactly the best at playing Pearly, because it requires actual intelligence. That sounds mean. That sounds really mean. But uh, Pearly does require a lot more understanding of what you're aiming to do, and it's not a very like straightforward game plan, so uh, it does require a little bit more nuance uh, with that. Similar to, like, Branded. Where it's like, if you play Branded, you probably know how to play Branded. If you play Pearly, you probably know how to play Pearly. But like overall, if you're learn trying to learn the deck, I wouldn't necessarily pick this up. It's just, hey, if you've already put the hours in, go for it. <clears throat> uh, speaking, speaking of which, the next deck is Ritual Beast, which is absolutely of that same mentality. However, is of that same power level as well. If you're able to actually play Ritual Beast, which it's not nearly as hard as it used to be. I think Ritual Beast was a lot more difficult just due to the fact that, like, each individual action mattered a lot more. Now it doesn't matter as much because you just, like, Protoss lock. But, with that being said, Ritual Beast is extremely strong. Um, yeah, it's very good for climbing overall. It has some very solid matchups overall. Uh, right, notably, um, uh, Tier Limit. But also, it's not bad into Tenpai because Tenpai, if they get all of their stuff banished, like, for example, off of Shifter. It's really bad. Because it's just so much more difficult to OTK with that. And uh, trying to push through a Ritual Beast board, not going to be easy, especially when Protoss is called Fire. Uh, and so it's very easy to call Fire. So if your opponent, like, gives you going first, you could just be like, cool, I'm going to activate Protoss and call Fire, and then and then Tenpai can't play the game, smile. So, very strong overall, solid deck. Uh, now, outside of Tenpai, I think it doesn't necessarily lose any matchup too particularly hard. It is kind of a coin flip. If it goes first, it can just win the game pretty much on the spot. Um, and if it goes second, it's not exactly out of the water, right? It is a strong combo deck. It's very solid. Uh, Unchained, I think, is still underrated, but I, I'm just going to put it in Rogue for now. Uh, Manadium is not great. It's similar in nature to Plant Link, but weaker that that's pretty much it y yeah i'm not gonna explain that one too much uh branded chimera or more specifically just chimera in general i think is also not too terrible right now uh, i don't think it's great but i don't think it's too terrible uh next up dark world dark world is bad 
I hate to break it to you, Dark World is not good. Uh, even with Silva being unbanned, that doesn't matter. Because the thing with Dark World, that has always been the thing with Dark World, is that it doesn't actually lose to what the opponent does, it loses to itself. That's it. Sometimes, you get really lucky, and you go on a tear. And sometimes, you get really unlucky, and you don't play the game. That's pretty much it. Uh, next up we have Dragon Link. Dragon Link is a very solid deck and is uh, a little bit slept on, but uh, not too much. With the new support, er, not new support, but with the uh, cards coming back from the ban list, it's, it's solid. So overall, very good deck. Uh, Flunder, I think, is also pretty good right now. It's not exceptional. It's not as good as it has been in, in some of the past formats and stuff like that. But Flunder is still extremely good and still has a lot of plays available to it and is still a solid option. Dino has like two plays and it has the same problem as Dark World. I don't know why I said, I said Dino has two plays. That's a lie. Um, it has the same issue as Dark World where it just loses to itself. And then on top of that, it also has the same issues as like playing. So there you go. <clears throat> Hero. Hero will never not be rogue. Hero is always playable. Hero is always fairly decent. That Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, next up we have Salomon Great. Uh, I'm gonna put Salomon Great in tier two. I think I think it's a fairly well positioned deck. Uh, it's not insane. It is a it, at least fairly okay in terms of um like combo decks. So there's that. I just noticed Math Mac is not on here. So let me fix that. Okay, circular. Uh, more specifically. Math Mac. Uh, I think Math Mac is also a pretty well positioned deck at the current or in the current moment, especially for climbing. Um, if a 10 by player is going to give you going first, yeah, that's it's pretty good. Activate Math Mac Circular and then win the game. Uh, yeah, Math Mac, I think, I think is pretty good. It's probably the best combo deck. Like, well, okay. I was about to say full combo deck, but then I also noticed that uh, this deck is here, so can't quite say that. But uh, it is a very, very strong deck overall. And uh, while it does lose to like a maxi and stuff like that, um, it's not as egregious because being able to just make te uh, terahertz, that's the card, is extremely powerful right now. So, y yeah, Mathmex. Mathmex still has circular at three. There you go. That's the issue, is that Cybers still has circular at three for some ungodly reason. Uh, next up, we have uh, Memento. Memento is funny. That's it. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Uh, Sky Striker, I think, is not exactly well, too well positioned right now, but I don't think it's terrible. Uh, mostly due to the fact that, like, going second, people are prepared for, and you really want to go second, so if Tenpai gives you going first, like, that's not great, because then you have to play into Tenpai with uh, Sky Striker, <laughs> which doesn't sound like a good idea. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, we also have Centurion. I think Centurion is fairly decent as well. Uh, it's way overhyped. I'll tell you that right now. It's way overhyped. Yes, it did well at Master Duel World. That's great. It's not as good as you're thinking it is. Uh, it does have some solid plays. And with the new Melodious Engine, which uh, I forgot to bring up when we talked about Snake Eye, uh, with the new Melodious Engine, it is still good. And it is a little bit stronger with the Melodious Engine. Uh, or potentially. Uh, but overall, I think it is uh, fine. And I know Cosmic Blazer negates the, er, like, ends the battle phase and all of that stuff. Like, when in a card attack, yada yada. That's cool. Tenpai will just make Transcendent Dragon and then prevent you from even activating that. So, smile. The thing is, I, I, I don't think it necessarily has, like, a, a terrible matchup. But I also don't think it has a matchup that's, like, really good for it. So, it's just kind of, like, a nice middle of the road deck. Uh, Light Sworn, I think, is also fairly decent right now, uh, mostly with the tier stuff. It makes it extremely strong, but overall, Light Sworn's not terrible. Vanquish Soul, I actually think, is uh, also very good right now uh, in the current metagame, mostly due to the fact that it, it, like, no one is prepared for the weird interactions of Vanquish Soul. Uh, so I think when people forget that Vanquish Soul exists, it gets a little bit better, but if it were to actually be a top strategy, uh, it would be easy to just, like, kick its teeth in. Um... <laughs> But overall, I, I don't think Vanquish Soul is, like, poorly positioned right now. Also, being able to play Shifter just in general is a solid idea. And then uh, we have the two new decks. 
besides Melodious, that also came out. Uh, Flame Swordsman. I'm not even going to realistically talk about this. It's bad. I know it's bad. It's really bad. Uh, that's pretty much it. However, you can play it in Infernoble, and uh, Infernoble is cool. I don't have Infernoble on here. It'd be it'd, it'd be on here. Um, anyway, uh, and then we have Gold Sark or S Shining Sark. I'm gonna put Shining Sark in Rogue. The problem is, it's not very good. It is very extremely aggressively one note. The note is blow up the opponent's board with Gandora. That's it. If that gets stopped which it very well can be, pretty effortlessly. If that gets stopped, you just kind of um, pray that that Gandora is able to stick it out for another turn, uh, which is, again, unlikely. It can happen, but it's not going to happen often. So yeah, for the most part, I don't think Shining Sark is uh, all that great. And that's pretty much it for this list. Uh, uh, now, re remember, this is specifically for the, um, uh, for climbing, so keep that in mind when talking about, or when, like, thinking about this tier list, right? Because, obviously, there are some tiers, or, like, some decks that are going to perform better in, like, they're, they're going to be better in climbing than they necessarily are in like terms of power level right so tenpai while it may not be the best deck to climb with is the best deck in the game right and the reason for that is similar to why you wouldn't necessarily bring specific decks to specific events right and that is like it may be the best deck in the room but that doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't have a target on its back and that target can cause it to be to perform worse or to not necessarily be the best choice for a specific uh event or a specific what have you so there you go anyway that's going to be it thank you guys so much for watching i hope that you guys did indeed enjoy if you did i like us very much so appreciate it and remember to always stay frosty Bye bye shout out to the frost guard my members thank you guys so much for the support and i hope you enjoy the content